Hello and welcome back. This is MC1 Gamer bringing you another Convert This. Now, I had done this once before with my Zombie Dragon, uh, and then I sold it when I pared down some of my army, and I kind of regretted it. Uh, I have another, uh, uh, I have a Terror Geist that's made in the traditional way, just made, you know, built, and it's uh, permanent, but I wanted to have a fle the flexibility of using additional models. And, and being able to swap out some of the heads, these multi-part models that have, you know, different head pieces and different poses really provide you with some nice options. I did it with the Morgasts, uh, even though I have two of the models, I wanted to have the option of having either of them uh, be any of the three Morgasts, uh, excuse me, not Morgasts, the Mortarks. Um, and in this case, the Zombie Dragon's a bit of a, of a challenge to become either a um, a... Terrorgeist or a zombie dragon. It's usually this piece right here, and this is how I did it last time, where I just magnetized this in so I had the solid piece with the zombie dragon head, and then I swapped that out and for the um, Terrorgeist. The problem is, is that as you can see, he's kind of standing upright, and that affords uh, a nice profile, but um, in, you know, as, and you can see it on this particular base, when, uh, you know, he's he's much higher up, and further away from the uh, from the terrain, from the uh, from the base uh, features, what happens is with the Terrorgeist, he's much more like this, and the Terrorgeist is kind of looking straight up this way, much closer to the base, and the wings really are kind of sticking straight up in the air like that, um, as opposed to more upright. So what I had done was I had magnetized in the previous one the legs, and then magnetized you know the legs to the base. And then had different features on the base, even here, magnetized so that I could remove pieces, swap them out, put it down, and it was this whole big production. And I just didn't want to do it. I figured I'd have one that, you know, if the zombie dragon that was upright like this, you know, static, a terror geist that was down like this, well, for the camera, it was more down like this, static. Uh, and if I could have one that was uh, swappable, then I would do it, but I'd have, I had to do a different type of an option. Now, again, I have a static Terrorgeist that's, you know, in the proper pose. I don't, I don't want to have to fiddle around. It was kind of, it was, you know, connected by, with magnets at the bottom and in the legs, and, you know, it could, it could shake and, you know, come loose, and it didn't happen very often, but it just wasn't sturdy enough for me, and I wanted something that was a little simpler. So I figured, all right, I have a Terrorgeist that's really low to the ground. Let me do something different. So what I did was I figured, uh, you know, sometimes the vampire count, the vampire lord, is up here on the terrorgeist, which is great. Uh, but um, you know, and then sometimes on the terrorgeist, there's a uh, ghoul king. So I figured I'll leave this as a static thing, and I, I don't mind leaving it as an upright position because everything else in the model is exactly the same. There's a couple little features. The terrorgeist has maybe a little bit more hair threads in the back here. It's it's minor. It's it's co small cosmetic pieces for the most part. Wings are the same, the body's the same, it's just the pose and uh, and what's connected to what and in what angle. So I figured for the swappable one, for one that I wanted to be able to choose either or that I wanted to use, uh, and then it's going to be rare that I'm going to have all of these on the table at the same time. I've got three giant, you know, dragon-like creatures, but there's going to be times that it's going to happen, and it can happen because it's Age of Sigmar, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's not going to happen all the time, so I wanted to have some more options so I didn't have, you know... 10 of these or five of these or whatever, even not to get too out of control, but more like five of these. There's no reason to have that many, um, uh, at least from, in my mind. I don't need to have that many. And uh, I wanted to have some options to make it a little more flexible and maybe a little more reasonably priced, but just, you know, we'll do it that way. So I'd have one that was going to be upright that could be either or. So I magnetized it and uh, I used it from the head point. Now it requires a little bit of dremeling, a little bit of cutting, and then, you know, a little bit of green stuff. You can see I have two magnets so that when it connects, the head doesn't shift uh, when you know side to side as much, and then obviously I magnetized it on the back here, and I haven't obviously based it. This is all you know green, just you know a, a basic green green plastic, and then what I could do is uh, I can connect it like so, and it would stay there. See, it's not coming off. You know, all the shaking I do ain't coming off. <laughs> and it's not going to shift unless I actually, you know, try to shift it. And then I could pull it off as needed. I can play with this thing because it's not painted. Um, and swap it. And that's the standard zombie dragon look. Okay? 
and I can swap it for the same version. You know, I cut this up, and I, you know, I have to be pretty careful about you know where where you're going to cut it. You know, just make sure you line it up before you do it, because you know it's always that hits that you know construction guy uh, mentality. Um, you know, measure twice, cut once. You know, because once you cut, you're done. You know, and then you're doing a lot of green stuff to figure it out. But you can see there, you know, that looks pretty good. It's a different look. It's a little higher up profile, a little standing further up, but it's a nice contrast to the other uh, terror geist that I have. And that way, if I wanted to field two of them, one with a mount, or even just two is at and of themselves, maybe one is available for summoning in, uh, which, you know, I, I rarely do, but it's nice to have that possibility. It's, it's high casting cost to do that. But it's possible. Certain games, it can be done, and there's nothing wrong with that, guys, because everything's crazy in Age of Sigmar. <laughs> and, but now I could actually make it a Terror Geist, or, and, it, and really, look, at, look how quickly this is a swap. It could be a Zombie Dragon. So I have this saddle here, so obviously I'm going to use it. You can see that there's a magnet in there. And as everybody knows, I have my undead, my vampire count themed undead, um, and with some elements from the Tomb Kings, is very much Bretonian themed. Mos Mousselin, uh, Mousselin, however you want to pronounce it. I can't keep hold on to these things, can I? So I have a lot of these, and if you've seen any of my older videos, you will see I have a lot of these uh, conversions that are with a tons of these Bretonian bits in the undead form. So I did that with the Vampire Lord, and I even used... This is actually the banner top of a Wood Elf um, model. I think... I forget which one it is. It's it's the banner uh, the banner top, I think, of... It might be... I don't know if it's Wild Riders. It's one of the um, Wood Elf kits, and it just looked very draconic to me. Look at that. Look at the big wings. It just fit. It just looked right. I have another one like this for the guy who's... Um, for a, Vampire Lord on foot that I'm putting in with my Grave Guard or a Grave Guard Champion or whatever because those are all like dismounted knights uh, that are that are that are uh, undeaded <laughs> they're deadites um, in any case uh, and this shield here is a resin shield that I got it says a nice fleur de lis um, and this is from I believe uh, oh god I really should have known this and had this in my memory if I'm going to go and plug it but if anybody's interested I'll go ahead you know just ask me in the notes and I'll see if I can find it. Um, but, uh, I put obviously a, uh, one of the heads, I had to, you know, dremel off and cut off some of the back parts, the, uh, the, uh, flowing part and the back of the head. And I put the, the Bretonian lance as opposed to this, the gigantic lance that I have, I am using, uh, but I'm using for something else. Uh, th that, that is actually, um, much bigger than this. And I just felt that it was just gigantic. It was, it was enormous. And I, you know, I have this so I could swap it in and out, and I magnetize it. You really don't even need to magnetize it. It fits like a glove. But let's go check, take a look and see how that works there. Um, so there you go. So there's the Brit former Bretonian Lord, or Paladin, who's now been corrupted and is undead and is on his zombie dragon. So you know, let's put that on there. That's the theme, and that's the look. All right, and he's not coming off, and he's going to be painted in the standard black and yellow um, material of the um, of Mousselin, uh, Mousselin. <laughs> I can never pronounce that right. Um, but now, let's say I want to make this again. He dismounted zombie dragon has a different profile. You can't summon in a vampire lord on a zombie dragon anymore, which I think is actually a good trade off. I think it's a good rule change. So now if I want it to be a Terror Geist standalone, there it is. But what if I want to have it, um, a uh, Ghoul King on it? So I changed up the Ghoul King's legs a little bit. I still haven't played with it. He doesn't have the magnet in his butt. Um, but I can situate him right up there. And he can sit up there and scream to his foes, Hey, I'm riding a Terror Geist. And there you go. So that's going to be... You know, I had it before on the other Terror Geist. I had it. Yes, yeah, he <laughs> he's not he's 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 a little drunk. Um, but um, I had it before situated where I just put a, the the um, dismounted version on the base because I hadn't you know I hadn't had come up with a concept of what I wanted to do yet. But I do have obviously another one that's on a uh, on a round, which I will um, use as a dismounted Ghoul King. But you know, I here's, this is an option for me to put it as a mounted Ghoul King. And he's got a little bit of a saddle, which, you know, I guess 
hey, the Ghoul King, he, he can have a saddle. I know he was riding bareback before, but why not? So <coughs> this is the solution that I've come up with to make it a little bit easier to switch out and decide which, which one of these I want to use at any one time. And then I decided, okay, well, I have my zombie dragon. Do I want to get another zombie dragon? It looks just like this. I mean, this is a nice pose, but I just have an issue with the pose being perpetuated across the table on every model. And anybody who knows me knows that I'm magnet crazy and I'm conversion crazy. Even if these little conversions, and this is a bit of a job, but it's not a massive conversion. I didn't really change that much in this model. All I did was create an option for you to swap out the heads and make some changes on the rider. Not that crazy, you know, not just a little bit of green stuff. But I did not want, <coughs> excuse me, I did not want to go just ballistic on a whole new um, uh, zombie dragon with this kit. Because you know what's going to happen? If you know me, I'm going to have to make it again. A convertible one that can convert to a, ter a terror geist again. And I wanted something to look different on the table. I wanted, you know, dragons are not all the same. And they're different sizes, different ages, different flavors. A zombie dragon could be could come from different origins. They could be a different type of a dragon as opposed to just one standard dra dragon type. So I wanted to have something that looked a little bit unique and also stood out as an unridden dragon. So I decided, and I'm going to push this to the side over here, put these over here. I decided that I was going to go with something from Reaper. Now I know it's not Warhammer, and I really don't care about the concept of whether I can use this for the very rare opportunities that I might go to actually a GW shop, uh, which requires you to have specific GW models on the table, but for the most part, all the places I go to are not GW specific shops, and I really don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have an issue with that. I have a lot of individual models that are from different sources, and you know, why not? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so this is for one of the Reaper models. It's a, you know, it's not one of the really, oh, yeah, he lost his head. Um, he's, he's, it's not one of the really uh, soft, very, some of these pieces are pretty strong. Uh, and, and pretty solid, and let's see if I can do this with one hand, uh, I think it goes up there, yeah, all right, let's see if that stays, just for the aesthetics, um, and I wanted this to be something that would stand out, and this is a much bigger model, so anybody who knows this is that it, it has a huge terrain piece that's gigantic like this, the wings are absolutely ginormous, the wings themselves aren't necessarily, but these ex the extension pieces are absolutely tremendous. Uh, so you can drink for all those people playing the Tremendous game. And um, I need to go and, and, and make something that's a little bit, you know, more appropriate to this model. And I think that this is fairly close. I mean, it's a little bit, he's a little bit more upright. His head's a little bit bigger. But the body structure overall is not much different. And apart from the added extensions, which I can cut down, the wings are not that different. I mean, if I cut them right to the edge of the screen, as you see here, they're going to be roughly the same, all right, in terms of their overall profile. He's just sitting a little bit differently. So I didn't use the big base that puts them like six inches taller on the, on the uh, 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 you know, in profile, because it's not needed. And I'll cut off part, probably the top of that or make something myself and just put it like this. Now, this is a big 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter round. It's too big, in my opinion. So I'm going to actually get like an 80 mil and have them sit more like that. And this will be the individual unridden zombie dragon that I'm gonna use in my army. And I'm gonna have, again, a little bit of a smaller base. Uh, it's just gonna be a little tinier, maybe, you know, just up to like maybe there round. It's not, it's just that there's a lot of area here that's open. And if it was, you know, a character-driven model, you know, like a Nagash type thing, which I put on 160 mil, which is gigantic. Um, I just wanted something that's a little bit closer to this, which is the 120 millimeter standard large monster uh, oval base. And I didn't want to put this guy on the 170, which is a 40k one, which is absolutely gargantuan for, I think for the magma dragon conversion I'm doing, which is going to use the magma droth with some wings, I might use that one because he's much longer. <laughs> and I think it would fit really well on that one. But for this guy, I think I'm going to sit, stay with this and around because he's got a tail that's just going to kind of whip around him and it's got to be converted in the back you know from here because of you know how the plastic mold works i'm gonna have to change that up a little bit or you know try and heat it up and have that changed but this is just this is a really big base um just a little bit too big for the overall profile and it's much bigger than even this one so i figure 
the 80 mil is the right way to go. Um, and then I'll have that be just the summoned dragon. And I'll paint that up accordingly, and we'll have a lot of fun with that. So, um, you know, this is this is a, a an effort to provide a little bit of different character with the with the big monsters, and to try to have some flexibility with it. So, if this inspires you in some way, great. And if you have any comments or you know whatnot, please feel free to leave them down below. And you know, like, comment, subscribe as usual, and have a great day, everybody.